Hi guys, it's Jake here again and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, this channel is all about nursing and life as an overseas nurse here in the UK. For today's video, I will share to you the common terms and abbreviations used by nurses and doctors here in the United Kingdom. And to make it more interesting and fun, we will be using a fictional but realistic handover situation and we will try to understand what the handover is saying. If you are a nursing student or a newly qualified nurse or an internationally trained nurse about to start their rotation on a medical ward, then this video is for you. So keep watching this video. Before I start, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then please do click the subscribe button down below and turn your notification bell on so you will know when my next video is released. So the first thing we'll do is we are going to receive a fictional handover and it is going to be read according to how it is written. Then we will analyze the handover and explain the things on it. And at the end of this video, we will read the handover again, but with the full meanings of the acronyms and with full understanding of what they mean. Okay. Let's start. Let's receive the handover. Hi, Nurse J. Are you receiving this patient? Okay, so let me give you the handover. So this is Mrs. A.T., 74-year-old lady admitted to A&E with SOB and DIB. Past medical history includes COPD, T2DM, CCF, and glaucoma. She lives alone with TTS, POC, able to mobilize with a ZF, she has been clerked by the SHO and we are treating her for IECOPD and CAP. Plan is to start NEBS, steroids, wean of O2 with target sets of 88 to 92%, IV ABX for 24 hours, question mark, switch to PO, MANE. OBS have been fine as you can see um, with new score of zero. TEP is DNARWBCOC. She has a G1 on her sacrum, and this is the Datex number. Any questions? <laughs> so that's your handover. Hopefully, you understood it. And if you did not, then let's get on to analyzing and untangling the terms in this handover. So first of all, you have their A and E. So for those who are not from the UK, you might be used to the term emergency department or ED or emergency room or ER. But here in the UK, we use A and E, which means accident and emergency. So A and E, ER, ED, they are all the same. Now, SOB and DIB. So this is the main complaint of the patient. This stands for shortness of breath and difficulty in breathing which is common for patients with respiratory problems for the past medical history um, if you've been practicing for quite some time now then you will be familiar with this but for for our students and newly qualified nurses so of course we have copd or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease we have t2dm when we read that at the handover we say type 2dm which is of course type 2 diabetes mellitus You've got your CCF. Now in other countries, you might be used with CHF or congestive heart failure. Here in the UK, we use CCF, which means congestive cardiac failure. For the social history, she lives alone with TTS POC. So we all know TTS stands for three times a day. POC is package of care. So if you are not from UK, you may not be familiar with this. So in the UK, they provide carers for patients to visit them at home, to give medications, to help them with hygiene, to help prepare their meals. And that's what POC means, package of care. So in one word, it's carers basically. And the frequency can vary depending on how dependent the patient is for the help of another person. POC can either be NHS or government funded or a private POC. So you need to know which one because when the patient's discharge, you will need to make sure that these are restarted. So when they go back to their house, then they have someone to look after them. 
Okay, and they are able to mobilize with a ZF. ZF stands for Zimmer Frame. Some patients may use Rollator Frame, the ones with the wheels. So this is your um, walking aids, basically. She has been clerked by the SHO, which means Senior House Officer. In terms of medical education in the UK, after medical school, they start off with foundation year. So foundation year one, foundation year two, and depending on the specialty that can go up, up to foundation year four or five, and then become a specialty trainee, become a registrar, and then you have your consultant. So to continue, we are treating her for IE, COPD, and CAP. So IE, COPD means infective exacerbation of COPD, which is, of course, your chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Okay. And CAP is, of course, community-acquired pneumonia. Now, let's go to the plan. So it says there to start NEBS, short for nebulizers, steroids, wean off O2. So O2, obviously, is oxygen. And when you say wean off, that means to slowly taper down. So if the patient comes in with 2 liters of oxygen, then you slowly turn it down to 1.5, 1 liter, 0 0.5 until the patient doesn't need oxygen anymore. With target sats, so that's saturation of 88 to 92%. IV ABX, which means antibiotics for 24 hours. Now, in any documentation in the UK, if you see the question mark, that is the short way of saying query or there's a possibility. Okay, so when we say there, question mark switch to PO money. So that means query to switch to oral tomorrow. Okay, so PO is of course per orim or by mouth. That means it will be switched to tablets. And mane, or main, as people, some people read it, means tomorrow. Okay? Next, the nurse says, OBS have been fine, as you can see. So OBS is short for observations. And if it is your first time in the UK, we seldom use the term vital signs. So observations is exactly the same as vital signs. It means your temperature, your respiratory rate your blood pressure, your heart rate, your oxygen saturation, and your oxygen requirements. So those are your observations. With news score zero. So when you say news, that means national early warning score. It is basically a traffic light warning system um, that has been adopted here in the UK and it's also adopted now in America um, basically to catch early the patients who are slowly deteriorating so um this is another big topic so i won't go into that but if the new score is five you have to refer it to the ccot which is another abbreviation ccot stands for critical care outreach team ccot is basically a team of nurses who've worked in the itu before and now specializing at catching those patients who are about to deteriorate and giving as well as advising the right treatment so that we can stop them from deteriorating. So that's your CCOT or your critical care outreach team. Okay, next sentence. TEP is D-N-A-R-W-B-C-O-C. So <laughs> that's all capital letters. So TEP stands for Treatment Escalation Plan, which is basically the level of care that the patient is happy to proceed or to go as far if he or she deteriorates. So for example, he's having difficulty breathing because of COVID and um, his lungs are weakening. So does he want to be on a ventilator? Does he want to be on OptiFlow or a high flow nasal oxygen? Okay or HFNO, that's your high flow nasal oxygen. So that is the TEP. Does he want to go to ITU or not? Now DNAR WBCOC stands for do not attempt resuscitation, ward-based ceiling of care. So that is their treatment escalation. So other types of treatment escalation, it can be for full escalation. It can be for DNAR HDU or high dependency unit level. 
or it can be DNAR, ward-based ceiling of care. Okay, next sentence. She has a G1 on her sacrum. G1 is basically grade 1, which refers to the pressure ulcer on her sacrum. Now, there has been a move to change this into category, but, you know, um, old habits die hard, so people are still using the term grade 1 instead of category 1, category 2, category 3 for pressure ulcers. Okay, so if you see G1, G2, that's grade 1, grade 2, pressure ulcer. Lastly, and this is the Datex number. So, Datex is basically a program of incident reporting here in the United Kingdom. Some hospitals may have a different program. Datex is basically an electronic incident report form that you need to complete if there are any serious incidents, near misses, medication errors, or delays in the patient treatment, or any um, disruptive behavior by the patient, or argumentative relatives that you know everyone needs to be aware of, and if there are things that can be improved to prevent those things from happening again. Okay, now that we know the meaning of all the words and the acronyms, let's try to read the handover again, but this time we spell out all the acronyms. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. So this is Mrs. A.T., 74-year-old lady admitted to accident and emergency with shortness of breath and difficulty in breathing. Past medical history includes chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, type 2 diabetes, congestive cardiac failure, and glaucoma. She lives alone with three times a day package of care able to mobilize with a Zimmer frame. She has been clerked by the senior house officer and we are treating her for infective exacerbation of COPD and community acquired pneumonia. The plan is to start nebulizers, steroids, wean off oxygen with target saturations of 88 to 92 percent, intravenous antibiotics for 24 hours, possibly switch to oral medication tomorrow. Observations have been fine, as you can see, with a national early warning score of zero. Treatment escalation plan is do not attempt resuscitation, ward-based ceiling of care. She has a grade one pressure ulcer on her sacrum, and this is the Datex number. Any questions? Okay, so that's it. That is our sample situation and explanation of our medical and nursing terms used here in the UK. So, what do you think of that? Are you confident now of taking handovers? Are you able to understand the terms and abbreviations? If you want more of this type of video, there's a lot more scenarios I can think and this, the number of abbreviations and terms we have used in this video is not half of it. So if you want more of this type of video, then please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and comment down below what situation you would like next. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video until the end. I hope that you are now better off in terms of your handover and understanding the documentation here in the UK. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.